We're here on O'Shaughnessy Boulevard outside of Glen Canyon Park. And over on the hillside behind me, you can see an interesting contrast. That hillside consists of two different kinds of chert. Up at the top of the hill is a light colored chert. And down at the bottom of the hill is that deep red chert with lots of shale interbeds. The same kind of thing that you'll see at places like Marin Headlands. There's clearly a difference here in the weathering style of these two rock types. The light colored chert is more massive, which is another way of saying that it's mostly chert and there's very little clay content. Whereas the reddish colored chert at the base of the hill has thin interbeds of shale. So thin little layers of shale between the cherty layers. So clearly that makes a difference here. We're only seeing the red shirt at the base of the hill because O'Shaughnessy Boulevard was cut into it. Okay, so that's an artificial outcrop. But up at the top of the hill, that line of outcrop stretches across the hills and basically tells us that that rock is tough and withstands weathering. A little bit further up the hill, by the big bend in O'Shaughnessy Boulevard, we see a fault where the two different shirts come into contact. The light colored shirt above and the red iron rich shirt below. On the foot wall of the fault, we can see our interbedded chert and shale, the reddish colored one, and you can see the tight folding. On the hanging wall of the fault, we have the massive chert without the shale interbeds. Right here at the fault surface itself, we see two features that tell us this is a fault. Not only are the rocks on either side different, but here we see a zone of totally busted up rock, and that's a breccia. And higher up, we've got these little blob shapes that are on the fault surface. These are botryoidal in their shape, meaning they look like little clusters of grapes, and they're concentrically zoned, so they've got rings. They may be silicious or they may be travertine. I won't know until I drop some acid on it. A little bit higher up on O'Shaughnessy Boulevard, we come to this spectacular outcrop of chevron folds. So if it's safe to cross the road and come over to the far side of the road where there is no sidewalk and there's lots of fast moving traffic, you can come and check out these folds yourself. So these chirts have been seriously messed up. They are in nothing like their original horizontal orientation on the seafloor. So the question is, why? The original author of Streetcar to Seduction, Clyde Warhaftig, tried to answer that question by measuring the orientation of some of these folds. And present company accepted, they tend to be upright folds with fold hinges that trend towards the northwest and then plunge towards the northwest between 30 degrees and like 60 degrees. Similar to the folds that we see at Marin Headlands, these folds on O'Shaughnessy Boulevard probably formed during Mesozoic subduction. And they weren't necessarily buckle folds just due to compressional stress of unbroken layers of chert and shale, but instead their asymmetry suggests that they are likely drag folds associated with thrust faults. So during subduction, new thrust faults formed and caused blocks of rock to move along those thrust faults. And what Clyde thinks happened here was that these sedimentary layers got dragged along the edges of those thrust faults, distorting their original shape into something like what we see here today. So you can take a look at these and you'll notice a couple things. You'll notice that there's very strong differences in weathering between the shales and the cherts, the cherts are the blocky ones that are resisting weathering. But not only that, the shales were actually mechanically weak during folding too. Um, they were kind of slippery like a banana peel. And that uh, allowed the relatively stiff cherts to slide relative to each other. This is an example of what we call flexural slip. Uh, kind of like if you take a deck of cards between your fingers and you squeeze them together, they'll fold, but each card will move a little bit relative to the cards above and below it. So take a look, see if you agree with Clyde. They're really spectacular folds to look at.